Okay, so in this video we want to continue to look at multi-step experiments, but here we're going to look at using tree diagrams. Um, generally speaking, I would say tree diagrams work better, but there are certainly examples, and I'll mention one later on, where a table is a better option. So you, again, it's about being flexible with your different representations to make good decisions about what's going to be the best way um, to represent the information in the question so that then you can find the probabilities required. Okay, so there are a number of advantages to using a tree diagram over a table. Okay, so one is that the branches can be weighted so that you don't need to repeat outcomes. So when we did our tables in the previous video, we often had, you know, we had blue, 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 red in the columns because there were three blue marbles and one red and we needed to make sure we had equally likely cells in the table. Um, we can set up a tree diagram like that too and have equally um, likely branches, but it, we can also condense things by weighting the branches so that we don't need to have such unwieldy tree diagrams. So that's one of the advantages. So if we were to consider a problem where we're selecting two marbles with replacement from a bag containing two blue and one red marble, and we want to find the probability that a blue marble is selected first followed by a red marble, then we could draw this tree diagram over here, which is equivalent to what we were drawing with the tables. Um, and that is, okay, at my first selection, I can get a blue or a blue or a red, and those are all equally likely to happen. And then at my next selection, it's with replacement, so I put the marble back, so I've still got two blues and a red. I can get a blue, a blue and a red, or a blue, a blue and a red, or a blue, a blue and a red. Um, and that lists all of the outcomes, and all of those outcomes are equally likely to happen. So then if we want to calculate the probability of getting a blue and then a red, we work through here to see, okay, there is two outcomes out of the nine, out, nine equally likely outcomes, um, and so two ninths is our probability. We can, however, condense... Um, the tree diagram because actually at each stage there's only two different things that can happen. We can get a blue or a red marble. Okay, So my first choice is either blue or red. But then, so it's really important, a lot of students I find jumble these around. Okay, So it is the outcomes at the intersection. So I, I start from here, I can then choose blue or red. From there I can then choose blue or red. Okay. Then I weight the branches of the tree diagram with probabilities. If there's no probabilities in the branches, that means they're equally likely to happen. So on the branch, I say, well, okay, but the likelihood of choosing a blue is twice as likely as choosing a red. There's a two out of three chance of choosing a blue and only a one out of three chance of choosing a red. I'm replacing the marble, so there's still a two-thirds and one-thirds chance at the second stage as well. So then if I want to work out the probability of getting blue and then red, I'm interested in this particular pathway. Okay. And when I'm working along a tree diagram, along the branches of a tree diagram, I multiply those probabilities together. So it's going to be two thirds times one third, which is equal to two ninths. Okay, so it gives us the same answer, it's the same problem, just formulated in a slightly neater triangle, uh, neater tree diagram. Okay, another advantage is that it's very easy to deal with problems where selections are made without replacement. Um, I'm really not that comfortable doing the tables without, with the, without the replacement. I think it's a bit unwieldy. Um, and it's really easy to do that simply by adjusting the probabilities on the second stage of the branches. Okay, so if we think about the same problem we had before, a bag containing three blue and two... Um, sorry, no, it's a different problem. A bag contains three blue and two red marbles. Find the probability that a blue marble is selected first followed by a red marble. Okay, so again, uh, in terms of setting up the tree diagram, the structure of the tree diagram, our first choice involves two options, getting a blue or red, and from there our second choice again involves two options, getting a blue or red. So at the end of the branches is where you list the outcomes. Okay, you get blue and then blue, or blue and then red, or red and then blue, or red and then red. Those are all the options I'm seeing there. Then, if my branches aren't equally likely, I then weight the branches by putting probabilities on them. So at the first selection, I've got five marbles, three of them are blue and two of them are red. So three fifths and two fifths. Then it's without replacement. So if I've drawn a blue marble out of the bag, at this point here, the bag now contains two blues and two reds because I've taken out one of these three blues. Okay, So I've now got two blues and two reds, which means at the second stage, the probability of drawing a blue is two out of four or a half, and the probability of drawing a red is two out of four or a half. Okay. If I drew a red marble first, what I have left in the bag is three blues and one red. So then the probability at the next stage of choosing a blue is, um, oh sorry, I've got those around the wrong way, haven't I? Can we correct that, sorry? That's a three quarters chance of getting a blue and a one quarter chance of getting a red. Okay. Um, 
So you, you just think carefully about what's happening at that second stage. And then the probability of getting a blue and then a red, the branch that I'm interested in is blue and then red. So I multiply those probabilities together, three fifths times one half, and that is three tenths. The other advantage is that tree diagrams lend themselves very nicely to problems where conditional probability is involved. So if you're given conditional probabilities as part of the description of the problem, absolutely that screams, please use a tree diagram. Okay, Because actually in the tree diagram, the second stage of the branches, the probabilities here, this second stage, they are all conditional probabilities. Okay, um, So let's have a look at the um, description first and then I'll talk through that conditional probability thing a bit more. So Molly enjoys playing table tennis and is planning to play against her brother this weekend. She and her brother are pretty evenly matched and she has a 50% chance of winning in her first match against him. However, if she wins the first game, her confidence improves and she then has a 60% chance of winning the next game. If she loses the first game, her confidence drops and the probability she will win the second game is only 35%. Use a tree diagram to represent the situation and find the probability that Molly wins the first two games she plays against her brother. So in this question, we're actually given two conditional probabilities. This 60% and this 35% are both conditional probabilities. The 60% is the probability that she'll win the second game given that she won the first game. And this probability is the probability that she'll win the second game given that she lost the first game. Okay, And we are seeing them here in our tree diagrams. In our tree diagram. All four probabilities here at the second stage are conditional probabilities. This point four then is the probability that she loses the second game given she won the first game. And this is the probability that she loses the second game given that she lost the first game. So we've got four conditional probabilities at that second stage of the tree, tree diagram. So if part of the information in your question is a conditional probability, a tree diagram is going to be key. And then the question is, what is the probability she wins the first two games she plays against her brother? So we want probability of win and then win. Okay, and so that is going to be 0.5 times 0.6, which is 0.3. Tree diagrams can also allow us to, allow us to represent probability problems with more than two stages simply by adding another stage of. So if they were to play a third game, she could win and then lose, win and then lose, etc. Again. Okay, so with, that's a limitation of a table. We could only have two stages. So whilst there are a number of advantages to tree, diagram, tree diagrams, which I've listed above, they don't completely replace tables. And if you were dealing with a problem where a standard die is rolled twice, it's much easier to draw a six by six table. I know that's a bit tedious than it is to do a six branches and then six branches. You have a tree diagram with 36 branches. Okay, So um, there are pros and cons to both. I would say more often than not, a tree diagram is the best way to go, but absolutely there are examples, as a, such as the one mentioned here, where a table actually is a more efficient way to represent the information. Okay, so before we move on to some examples, the question is why do we multiply along the branches in a tree diagram? So remember I said if we're interested in this branch, um, we do this probability times this probability to work out what the total probability for that branch is. So the question is, well, why? And it's all to do with what we know about conditional probability. So when we're working, when we're calculating the probability of the, a branch, that's an intersection. Okay, so that's the probability of A and B happening. Okay, that's what we want to work out: probability of A intersection B. And we know from what we've been doing so far, I've told you that you need to multiply these two probabilities together in order to get the probability of A intersection B. So probability of A intersection B is probability B times the probability of A given B. If we then rearrange this equation, so divide both sides by b, which cancels it out from here and puts it over here, we get this. Probability of a given b is the probability of a intersection b over the probability of b. So the fact that we multiply the probabilities along the branches is all to do with our understanding of how conditional probability works. Okay, So that's why we always multiply along the branches. Um, if we're interested in more than one branch, so if we actually want to know, you know, probability of A intersection B or the probability of A intersection not B, we would then, we do, we multiply along the two different branches and then we would add, we'd add that probability together with this probability, not B and A. Okay. All right. So let's have a look at some examples. A bag can, uh, sorry, bag A contains two black balls and three three red balls. Bag B contains three black balls and five red balls. A ball is selected at random from each bag. 
what is the probability of getting one red and one black? It's really important that you read the question carefully here. This question could also have said a bag is selected first and then a ball is selected and then you draw a different tree diagram. But in this case, it is a ball is, is selected from each bag. So our first selection is going to be from bag A and the options that we could get from bag A would be a black or a red. Advice with the tree diagram, always start with quite wide branches to give you room to be able to extend from each of them. Okay. Bag B contains three black and five um, red. Okay, so again, in terms of outcomes, we could get a black or a red. A black or a red. And yes, they're not equally likely, so we'll weight the branches. Bag B. Oops. Okay, so that's our two stages, our two selections, the outcomes that are possible. Now we want to weight the branches with the probabilities. Okay, so um, when we're selecting from bag A, the probability will select a black um, ball. We've got three out of eight balls are black and five out of eight balls are red. Then when we select from bag B, bag B, oh sorry, I did bag B first. I read the wrong bit, sorry. Bag, uh, sorry, bag A contains two black and three red. Okay, so it's two out of five are black and three out of five are red. And then when we make our selection from bag B, we've got three out of eight are black, three out of, uh, sorry, five out of eight are red, three out of eight are black, and five out of eight are red. It's really important that when you draw a tree diagram, if you add up all the probabilities that stem from the one point, the two fifths plus three fifths must add to one. If they don't add to one, there's a third branch here that you've missed, okay? So it's really important that if all the probabilities are stemming from the one point, they must add to one. Three eighths plus five eighths is one, and so that's all good from there, okay? All right, so the question we want is the probability of getting one red and one black, okay? Probability of one red, one red, one black. Sorry. There are two ways that can happen. We could get a black and then a red, or we could get a red and then a black, okay? So, probability of black and red, or probability of red and black. When we would use the word or, sorry, we add. We'll talk more about that later on in the counting methods. Okay, so black and then red is two-fifths times five-eighths plus red and then black is three-fifths times three-eighths, okay? Now, we could, I, I would normally um, simplify these fractions here and then multiply them together, but if I do that, then I'll have a not common denominator for the adding. So I'm going to just leave them as they are, just multiply along. So it's 10 on 40, which yes, would simplify to a quarter, but it's not helpful given that I'm going to want to add it on to, to 9 on 40. So let's keep the common denominator. So it is 19 on 40, so just less than half probability that I would draw one of each colour. All right, example two, Jackson cycles to school and has to cross two different, uh, sorry, two sets of traffic lights. In the morning traffic, the first traffic light is green for 70% of the time and the second traffic light is green for 45% of the time. Find the probability that Jackson doesn't have to stop on his ride to school. Okay, so the two stages are the two traffic lights and at each traffic light, it could either be green or red green or red. Okay, so the probability of a green light at the first um, traffic light is 0.7 and red is 0.3. Um, probability of a green traffic light at the second traffic light is 0.45, so the red is 0.55. Okay, so that's what could happen. We want the probability that he doesn't have to stop. So that is the probability that he gets green and green. So that's going to be working our way along here. So that is going to be 0 0.7 times 0 0.45. Just going to get the cards to do that for me. 0 0.315. You could do 7 times 45. 7 times 40 is 28 and 7 times 5 is 35. 28 plus 35 is 315. And so therefore that's where we get the 0.315. Um, okay. In these first two examples, the probability at the second stage of the tree diagram are not influenced by the outcome of the first stage. In these cases, we would say that these events are independent of each other. We'll talk about that more in the next lesson. 
Sometimes, however, the probability is so what we're talking about here is the fact that this the probability of a green light at the second traffic light didn't change depending on whether there was a green light at the first traffic light. They were completely independent of each other. It's by definition the idea of an independent event. As I said, we'll talk about more that more in the next video. Sometimes, however, the probabilities at the second stage are dependent on the outcome of the first stage, and that's when they're conditional probabilities. Um, so let's have a look at some examples where that happens. A bag contains three red counters and two black counters. A counter is selected from the bag and not replaced before a second counter is selected. Find the probability of selecting two red counters. Okay, so this time it's not two different bags, it's just two selections from the same bag, but it's still two stages. At our first selection, we could get a red or a black counter. At our second selection, we could again get a red or a black counter. Okay, it's got three red counters and two black counters. So therefore, at our first selection, the probability that we get a red counter is three out of five, and the probability that we get a black counter is two out of five. Okay, then we need to think about the conditional probabilities at the second stage. So if we draw out a red counter first, okay, then when we, if we take out a red counter, we now only have two red and two black. So the probability of getting a red at the second selection is two out of four, which is a half probability of getting a black is two out of, sorry, four, which is a half. Alternatively, if we drew a black counter first, we would still have three red counters and only one black counter. So the probability of selecting a red counter at the second selection would now be three out of four, and the probability of selecting a black counter would be one out of four. Okay. So then we want the probability of selecting two reds. So the probability of getting red and then red is going to be three-fifths times one-half, which is um, three on ten. That's a fraction in simplest form, or you can write it as 0.3 if you really want. There's absolutely nothing wrong with three-tenths. Just leave it as three-tenths. Okay, question four. Two boxes contain marbles. Box A contains five blue marbles and three clear marbles. Box B contains three blue marbles and three clear marbles. A box is randomly selected and a marble is drawn randomly from that box. So this is where it's really important that you read the question carefully. Okay, this time we're not selecting a marble from each box. We are first selecting a box and then we are selecting a marble from that box. Okay, so in this case our first selection isn't blue or clear. Our first selection is either box A or box B. And then from box A we could choose a blue or a clear marble and then from box B we could choose a blue or a clear marble. Okay again we want to wait with probabilities so it says a box is randomly selected so there are two boxes we randomly select one which means each has an equally likely chance of being selected so that's half and half then if we choose box A box A has, has five blue and three clear marbles so we have a five-eighths chance of choosing a blue marble and a three-eighths chance of choosing a clear marble if we choose box B, it has three blue and three clear, so that is three out of six or half, and three out of six or half. Um, okay, so then, so part A, draw a tree diagram to represent the situation, so we've done that. Part B, find the probability that a blue marble is selected. So probability we get a blue. Now there's two ways to get a blue. Uh, so I'm just going to make, just going to move that up a little. There's two ways to get a blue. That would be probability of getting sorry box A choosing box A and a blue marble or the probability of choosing box B and a blue marble okay so essentially it is this branch plus this branch okay so we work out this probability and we add okay so the probability of choosing box A and a blue marble is half times five eighths plus um, choosing a blue marble from box B is half times half, okay, and so that is 5 on 16 plus 1 quarter, which is 5 on 16 plus 4 on 16, and so that is 9 on 16. Part 2, find the probability that a blue marble is selected given that the marble was selected from box A. So probability of blue given it came from box A. Now this is in the tree diagram, that's here. Probability we chose a blue marble given that it came from box A, that's just sitting there, that's 5 eighths. That's exactly what that branch represents, probability of giving 
choosing a blue marble given that we chose box A. Then we want the probability that the marble came from box A given that we know that it's blue. Now this is not sitting in the tree diagram because the tree diagram isn't structured this way around. We've got boxes and then colours, so we've got the colours given the boxes. We don't have the boxes given the colours. So this is where we need to actually think a bit harder. We need to think about our um, we need to think about our conditional prob probability. So that we know that for conditional probability, it's the intersection of those two things. So box A and a blue marble over the probability of getting a blue marble. So box A and a blue marble is one half times three eighths, one half times three eighths divided by the probability of getting a blue marble, which we worked out in part B and B part one, sorry, which was nine sixteenths. Okay, so the numerator there is three on 16. We're dividing that by nine on 16. So that is three on 16 times 16 on nine. The 16s are gonna cancel down. We've got three on nine, which is one third in simplest form. Okay, example five, I think it's the last one. Oh no, we've got two more. Um, a football team wins 80% of its games when the star player plays and 30% of its games when he does not play. The star player received a corky at training during the week and there is a 60% chance that he will not play the next match this weekend. Find the probability that in its next match, the, the star player plays and the team wins, the team wins, the team wins given the star player plays, its star player plays given that the team wins. Okay, so we need to organize the information before we can calculate the probabilities. All right, so let's think about what happens. The um, probability that whether they win or not is dependent on whether or not the star player plays. So the first stage has got to be about whether the star plays. So the star plays, the star doesn't play. Okay, those are the two options. And then from there, they either win or lose. From there, they either win or lose. So again, it's about organising your information so that then we can answer all the probability questions. Um, it doesn't matter that the question doesn't say draw a tree diagram. We need it in order to answer the questions. Okay. Um, a football team wins 80% of its games when the star player plays. So the probability of winning given that the star player plays is 80%. That's that branch there. And wins 30% of its games when he does not play. So that's the probability of winning given that the star player doesn't play. That's 0.3. Now remember, all the probabilities that stem from the same point have to add to one, which means we can also work out if there's an 80% of chance, 80 chance of winning when the star plays, there's a 20% chance of losing. If there's a 30% chance of winning when the star plays, there's a 70% chance of losing. Um, the star player received a call kit training during the week and there is a 60% chance that he will not play. So probability that he won't play is 60%, therefore a 40% chance that he will um, play. Okay, part A, the probability that the star player plays and the team wins. Probability that the star plays and the team wins. So that's simply going to be this branch here, 0.4 times 0.8. Okay, 0.4 times 0.8, 4 times 8 is 32, so 0.4 times 0.8 is 0.32. The probability that the team wins so there's two ways that they win. The star plays and they win, or the star doesn't play, but they still win. Okay, So that's going to be 0.4 times 0.8 plus, for the probability that the star plays and they win, plus, so or, 0.6 times 0.3. The star doesn't play, but they still win. Sorry, 0.3. So that's 0.32. This is 0.18. And so that is 0 0.5. So I have a 50% chance of winning. Part C, find the probability that the team wins given that the star plays. Okay, that, this one's actually sitting in the tree diagram. The team wins given that the star plays is just that, 0 0.8. Probability that the star plays given that the team wins. Okay, so this is not how the tree diagram is set up, so we need to actually use our formula to calculate this. 
So we want the probability that the star plays and they win, so the intersection on the numerator, over the probability that they win. Now we've actually calculated these two probabilities in parts A and B. So it's a 0.32 probability that the star plays and they win over the probability, probability that they win is 0.5. Let's multiply the top and the bottom there by 100, so that's 32 over 50. And then we can simplify from there, so that is 16 on 25. Okay, question six, final example. There are six boys and eight girls on the school's social committee. A vote is taken to decide if there should be a school formal this year. One third of the boys and three quarters of the girls wish to have a school formal. A student is randomly selected from the committee and asked for their vote. Find the probability that the student selected is a girl if it is known that the student selected is in favour of a school formal. Okay, so again, we want to organise the information. So we've got gender, boy or girl, and then we've got whether they are in favour or not in favour of the school formal. Okay, so let's set that up. Boy, girl, I'm just going to make for or against the formal. For or against the formal. Okay, there are six boys and eight girls on the social committee. So that means there's a committee of 14, six out of 14, so that's three out of seven are boys, and eight out of 14, so that is four out of seven are girls. Um, one third of the boys are for the formal, so probability being for the formal given that you're a boy is a third, which means two thirds of them are against it. And three quarters of the girls are for the formal, one quarter is against it. Okay, we want to find the probability that the student selected is a girl if it is known that they are in favour of a formal. This is a conditional probability, given that. Okay, so we want to know the probability that someone is a girl given that they are, in, they are for the formal, they're in favour of the formal. Okay, so that means, again, the Diagram isn't set up like this. If it was asking us for the probability that they're for the formal given that they're a girl, that would be just here, sitting here, three quarters, but it's set up, the tree diagram set up the other way around, and we can't change the tree diagram around. We have to just calculate our conditional probability using our formula. So we want the probability of being a girl and for the formal over the probability of being for the formal. Okay, so girl and four is four sevenths times three quarters divided by being for the formal there's two ways that that can happen you can be a boy that's for the formal or a girl that's for the formal so essentially it's the green path try and not hide the yellow green path divided by the total of the yellow paths okay so probability of four is three sevenths times a third or four sevenths times three quarters okay so let's simplify Four sevenths times three quarters is three sevenths. This is again the threes cancel there, so that's one seventh plus, and the fours cancel there, three sevenths. Okay, so what we have here is three sevenths divided by four sevenths, which is three sevenths times seven over four. The sevens cancel, and so there is a three quarter probability. So it does happen in this instance to be the same probability as the probability of being for the formal given that you're a girl, but that's just a coincidence of the numbers. Okay, Okay. so the work today is a mixture of things from exercise 8F and also from an additional um, worksheet.